What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the After Effect Podcast. I'm your host, LeBron Stephan, but you can call me LBZ, L Boogie, Big Brian, 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 B Brian, LB, Brian, the choice is yours. Welcome to episode 52. We have a very, very, very special guest. The After Effects show alumni, Don Shumpert, is back on the show. Arizona Cardinals assistant running backs coach is back on the show just to check in to talk about uh, matriculating through an entire NFL season with co- um, I mean with, with COVID-19 protocols, uh, all the offseason moves that Arizona Cardinals have, have, have made, uh, black coaches in the NFL, and uh, things of that nature. So super, super excited for him to jump on. I just sent him the link, and once he jumps on, we will go in. A guy who came from Cleveland. Okay, well, you ain't from Cleveland, no. Cleveland was the best location in the nation. Yeah. You know, we from Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. Glenville community on the east side of Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland was called the best location in the nation. We should be good. Oh, yeah, we good. My dog. What's up, man? Hey, I can't call it. Hey, man, appreciate you appreciate you jumping back on, bro. It's, it's been like nine, ten months, man. I know, bro. This thing like forever, right? <laughs> I know. that. That's why I wanted you back on, man, because last time we talked, like, it, COVID was kind of new, and I know the NFL was still trying to figure it out, and, and now it's like you done went through a whole NFL season with COVID protocols and so much has changed, man. So I, I appreciate you coming back. Yeah, most definitely, man. Most definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, bro, we can uh we can jump right into it, man. Like I said, uh back in June we talked, I think that was episode four. I had just started this thing and and uh you all were like trying to figure it out, what not really sure how the NFL season was gonna go. So man, just talk about like an entire NFL season with COVID, like 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 from a from a coaching standpoint, man. Talk about like the ups and the downs and uh, what was that experience like? Yeah, the probably the toughest part would be on the younger guys, you know, because them young guys missed a lot of reps. They usually get in the off season, you know. So typically, what we had tried to do as coaches, you know, we had a lot of virtual Zoom meetings, and so we try to get them guys to walk through stuff. But at the end of the day, yeah, I can tell my nephew this is what you got. He can he can answer back yes, you know. I need to see it on the field. So, you know, that that probably was that that was the worst part about it. Um, as far as the protocols, though, it was, I mean, you just had to get up early and take a test every day. You had to go yeah. pick up your tracer. They had, like, a contact tracer or whatnot. So it wasn't, that wasn't too bad. I mean, you got used to it. You just put that a part of your routine. You just had to wake up yeah. a little bit earlier or whatnot. Luckily, yeah. you know, the test, they didn't put it all the way in the back. So, you know, it wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad, to be honest with you. So, you know, that part yeah. was cool, man. But, you know, not playing with no fans. So the first game we played San Fran. And we all just out there like, bro, this is different. <laughs> like, right, right. It's, it's quiet. It's, it's quiet. You can hear. You can hear what everybody's saying. You can hear all the text. <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 was different for sure. So like, I feel like my approach this year as a coach was to, to bring more energy because we just needed more energy on this sideline. Cause yeah. you know, typically you get that from the fans or whatnot. And yeah. so like, I put that upon my shoulder and the other coach just to make sure we bring some energy on this sideline. So that, that I mean, that was that was fun, but it still was different. I having no fans for sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, you got to think about it. I started playing football at eight. I'm sure you started early as well. Ever since we played football, there were always fans. Always, <laughs> so like, bro. Like, like that's that's why it's so different. Like, then you you matriculate through this, and it's no fans. Like, it's literally look and feels like a different game of football. When you start playing, right. it's always somebody in the crowd. A hundred percent, bro. Always somebody in the crowd, you know, and especially like your parents or your fr- your friends and your family, all this stuff, man. You yeah, you missed yeah. out on that for the most part. Now we did yeah. play Dallas on Monday Night Football. It was probably about twenty thousand fans, so it kind of it gave you that okay. feeling, man. You yeah, know, we yeah, played yeah. pretty actually pretty pretty. We played pretty good that night, you know. Yeah. So the fans do play a part, as you know. Yeah, yeah, um, man. Give me an inside look on on 
Oh, and only, only the catch. I, I forgot what game it was, bro. But that 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 last second uh, uh, catch went with Kyler Murray through the bomb, and and uh, DeAndre Hopkins caught it over like three dudes. Man, talk about like because I'm I'm sure that that was like an exhilarating feeling being a coach, right? But like and sure. and, and you and you were former player as well. But just give me an inside look through that play. Like like did the play go like it was supposed to? Did did Kyler Murray just improvise? Like and then yeah. just touch. Talk about when he caught that ball and what was the feelings on the sideline? Yeah, so, man, basically, man, that was two great players making a play. Now, we didn't even call Hail Mary on that play because we was, we was about to run two more plays. So we kind of – we had three receivers lined up to the right, and it was supposed to go to the right, but they took it away. So Kyler improvised, rolled out to the left, and he seen him hop out there by himself. And, of yeah. course, he tossed it up and gave him a shot. But, I mean, when he caught it, bro, everybody was just looking like, wow, he did not just caught it. And everybody just ran to the sideline, bro. It, it was a crazy feeling, man. But that was just two great players. You know, you can't coach that. Two great right, players. Right, right. Play. And, right. But it, it was fun, though. You know, I actually, I won to stay my junior year on the Hail Mary just like this. So I had flashbacks. Yeah, I had yeah. flashbacks of that, you know. So that, that was a pretty unique feeling for sure, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm already knowing. I, I remember as soon as it happened, I texted like, bro, what? that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was crazy. That, that was a good game, man. It was, it was a back yeah. and forth game. Now, Buffalo yeah. got a really good team. They well coached. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, uh, Drizzy still over there going crazy. Mike is still over there. Uh, yeah. doing doing numbers. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. So he got him a yeah. new deal. Yeah, I talked to him. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, for that's what's up, man. So, uh, talk talk about the off season moves, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one of the best defensive line defensive linemen in the country with JJ Watt. We played against Wisconsin several times. Uh, he was at Iowa. Y'all just signed uh, AJ Green, so him, him and D. Hop, Kyler Murray, man. How optimistic are you feeling with the offseason moves? I know you. I know you got the draft coming up as well. And uh, what what are the goals for the twenty twenty one season? Yeah, well, you know, just our third year. So you got to think about in two thousand eighteen, we had the worst record in the NFL. So this is our third year, and typically, you know, teams make their biggest jump going into their third year. Or whatnot. Yeah. Last year, we hurt ourselves a lot on penalties and things before the ball was even snapped. So once we clean that up, I think that's the number one goal. Let's not beat ourselves this year. Now, picking up a guy like J.J. Watt, that's great, you know, because he he definitely has, he's a leader, um, really mm -hmm. good player, you know, so it's really going to help our locker room. You know, A.J. Green, like really, really good receiver, you know, he's still productive. Right. And to Jesus. have him as, as your number two guy, you know, as a veteran, that, that should be really good. Should open it up a lot for K-1 to have yeah. guys like Hop and, and AJ and Kirk to throw to. But, you know, we still got a long way to go, man. We, we still got to, you know, have a good draft. Hopefully bring in a couple more free agents, man. But I think the goal for this year is just not to beat ourselves. Right, right, right. That, that, definitely, definitely, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to watch, man. All, a, lot, a lot of games last year were definitely excited to watch. And you can tell, like like you said, y'all are on your way. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man, definitely. So yeah. it's trending up right now. Definitely, definitely, man. So, uh, so, so something big in the media right now is is the limited opportunities for for black coaches in the NFL. I know it's only a handful of you all, man. So, talk about what what has been like just the the fields and the diaspora of, of, amongst like your colleagues as far as black coaches are concerned. Uh, it's definitely, I mean, I wouldn't say a privilege, but but I, I mean, I'm sure you feel blessed to be in that space, to be in the space to, of of NFL coach being of African-American descent. So, man, just talk, because I know it's, it's really heavy in the media that certain assistant coaches, whether they got 10, 15, 20 years of experience, they're not even getting interviews for head coaching jobs or they're getting interviews, but they're not even being considered. So how, how, how do you see it being in that space? Yeah, definitely, man. This is a topic, you know, back when we were school, when we was in school and we were studying sports business, you know, we talked about the yeah. same, same topic or whatnot. I mean, I think the key is to have – so what they did this this on um, this last year is they got fellowship roles basically for every team, and it's, and it's kind of about one or two African-American coaches that get put on a one- or two-year deal. So offering that to have some introductory roles, that it really helped. But the key is to start getting black coaches in the quarterback room and offensive coordinator room because those are the guys that usually become head coaches in it. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it might be two or three like black quarterback coaches or offensive coordinators. So, you know, we just got to get them guys in them rooms, and then I think the numbers will start to change. Yeah, 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 de definitely, definitely, man. It's, <clears throat> I mean, I, I mean, I, I feel blessed to 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 know to know somebody to have a homie like in that space. You know what I mean? And 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 I know you're gonna keep killing it, and just 
you know, matriculating through it. Like, like as as we know, as grown men, it's politics and everything, and yeah. any and everything that you do. So, so yeah, that's 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 what's up, bro. Um, so yeah, last question, man. Last time we talked in June, we were still trying to figure out COVID, man. We just hit a calendar year of of the COVID nineteen protocols and the world shutting down. How have you had to grow spiritually, emotionally, physically uh, during these like super unprecedented times? So many things are, are are transpiring that we really don't know. We we're, we're still trying to like figure this whole thing out. No, for sure, man. I mean, it's first thing, you know, we was at home for a long time. So I think the number one thing I had to start finding things that I like to do, and whether it's just like reading, working out, things of that nature. But I mean, it's it's, it's been a, a tough adjustment period for sure, you know, because we used to doing things a certain way our whole life, and now all of a sudden we can't do right. things. So right. it, it was just, I mean, just like anything else you had to judge, man. But I just think the biggest piece that was missing probably was just the interaction with humans. And luckily we got into that, you know, by the time training camp started. But it, it was it was tough trying to introduce yourself to a rookie, you know, mm-hmm. during his own type setting or whatnot. So yeah. I, I just think the whole human interaction was the, was the piece that we was missing a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, definitely, definitely, bro. Well, like always, man, it's always flowers when we speak, man. Keep keep going, keep killing it, bro. Keep keep putting on for 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 your family and St. Louis and 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 the, the U of Iowa and everything, man. And we'll we'll speak down the road, bro. Oh uh, yeah, appreciate it. But hey, what episode you on now, bro? Bro, this <laughs> you was on episode four, bro. We had 52. This episode 52, yeah. bro. That's yeah. dope. That's dope. Hey, man. I love it. Hey, passion project, bro. Consistently putting these things out, bro. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. I love it, man. Yes, you sir. keep doing yes, it, bro. It's good stuff. I listen to. I be told in, man. So that's good. Yes, sir. Hey, I, hey, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man. Stay, stay blessed, man. I'll hit you up soon. All right, bro. You too. All right. Oh uh, yeah, guys. So appreciate Don for for jumping back on for episode fifty two. He's super super busy as the Arizona Cardinals are are preparing for the draft. Um. So yeah, he's a After Effects show alumni. He came on episode four back in June. And now uh, jumping back on for episode 52, just for up to date. So yeah, if you are watching this video, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment if you have a question. Make sure you like the video as well. If you're listening via audio, uh, rate us, rate this episode, rate the podcast in general. Let us know what we can improve on and things of that nature. So until the next time, peace. Subscribe to LeBron Daniel TV. But you already knew that, where we dig deep and find our hustle. And every single day, we are better than yesterday. Subscribe.